war is liberty as you have won the victory we're living in your freedom we walk by faith we walk by faith and not by sight we praise you lord with all our might we're living in your freedom come on and shout it out with me shout it out we will sing it loud let the whole world know that you saved our saved our souls lord for everything you've done we will sing your praises whoa for you and it's never gonna fade away 
we are the free and yours is the glory oh 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 we are the risen we're living alive in you and our passion will not die no our passion will not die nothing can stop us someone shout we'll be running through the night and our passion will not die no our passion will not die we are the free the freedom generation sing in a mercy you are the one who set us all in motion yours is the glory there's a fire in our hearts and it burns for you and it's never gonna fade away we are the free and yours is the glory oh, oh, oh. There's a fire in our hearts and it burns for you And it's never gonna fade away We are the free and yours is the glory Oh, oh, oh a very living God, the one true God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus, Abba, Father. Oh, the one that gave us permission to enter into his throne room, Father God. Oh, we have all access, Father God, to every single promise in your word, Jesus. And we worship you, God, and we focus on you, Lord. Our hearts are filled with your glory, Lord Jesus. And we want more, Father God. Let us, let our hearts be your home, Father God. Be at home in our hearts, Lord, as we ask for more of you. In Jesus' name.
everybody. Dr. Mark Barkley here. I call you blessed today in Jesus' name. Hey, Pastor, thanks for being my friend, and thanks for this great opportunity to let me speak to the church family, uh, whether, uh, you know, um, it's an evening service, morning service, special service, whatever it is, I'm just glad to be part of your ministry. And I believe that God wants me to say some things today that will build us all up and make us stronger. I've been noticing lately the attack, a literal demonic onslaught, an army of invisible enemy soldiers, a dark cloud that's trying to get this word out of us. Now, we know you can turn to many verses. You know, there's verses that Jesus said, Satan cometh immediately to steal the word that was sown. Uh, one of my favorites is the one that talks about the, the word of God in Corinthians and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself exalts itself against the knowledge of God. 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 4 and 5. Exalts itself? Yeah. Now listen, I've been hearing this. It's not hearsay. I've been hearing it. I've been watching it. I've been hearing preachers. Thank God your pastor's not this way. But I've been hearing preachers say, don't read the book of 1 John because it talks about confessing your sin. And there's no reason to confess anything or repent of anything. Ah, nonsense. Don't listen to that rubbish. Then the same group of preachers said, Let's, we should not read Galatians chapter 5 because it talks in there that if you willfully commit the following things, you know, as a lifestyle, you don't inherit the kingdom of God. Well, that chapter has to go, they said. Then I heard the same group of preachers say, don't read any red letters in your Bible unless it's after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Really? And then I heard the same group say, when I get done in a minute, you're going to stand up and clap for your pastor. Let me tell you what. I heard that uh, these are famous preachers. This is not little guys in a back room somewhere. <clears throat> then I heard this same group of preachers say, any part of the New Testament that Paul or anyone else or Jesus Christ is referring to the Old Testament, you should not read that because they're just meandering about the law. Now wait, hang on a second. How far will this go as these preachers exalt themselves above the Word of God? This is the book, darling. This is what your pastor's called to study, pray over, Insert it, digest it, and deliver it to you in a way that you can use it every single day. That's what's so powerful about this book. I hold in my hand today, the Holy Bible, the answer to America. America has no answers outside of this. Who are we fooling? This is the instruction manual for life. There's nothing like it. And, and that's why I salute your preacher. Maybe some of you are growing up into be preachers, either in the house or sent out. Maybe you're not an apostle or a pastor or a, a pulpiteer, but you're called to teach in a classroom. Maybe not that even, but you're called to go out and witness to family and friends. Without this, you can't turn anything. This is what God confirms. Now, God will confirm a human as they study and fast and pray and consecrate themselves like to become a minister or an elder in the church. God will give you a laying on of hands and like an ordination of a public confirmation. However, it is his word that's in our mouth. It's his word in our mouth that makes us such powerful people. And the beauty of being a Christian in the last days like this and the beauties of having a church that preaches the word of God and a pastor that's not afraid to tell you the whole truth, thank God for those kind of preachers. Thank God for those kind of pastors that they just open the book from cover to cover and say, these are the thoughts of God. Yeah, and I appreciate that. Now listen, you can't be following people that exalt themselves above 
the knowledge of God. L look at our court system. They don't even know what they're doing. They're exalting themselves above the knowledge of God. In those robes, sitting in those seats, or the jurors even, they're coming up with rules and laws and changes to say, we don't want that, so we're going to, what, make a decision against it, make a ruling against it. But what they're doing when they do anything above God's way is they are exalting themselves or the whole court system, exalting itself above the Word of God. Look at our lawmakers. Look at the challenge that the schools have against creation. They're exalting themselves above what the Word of God says. Now, one of the reasons, I, I, I've said it a couple times already in the last 10 minutes, one of the reasons that I love your preacher and I'm glad to stand with your house is because they stick to this book. This is what we preach. This is what God confirms. The Bible says God confirms this with signs, wonders, you know, that follow. The, he confirms this book. He confirms this word. You could say, I, I, I'm going to say it again in a couple of minutes, but you could say, God is going to send down fire from heaven to those preachers like your pastor who's not afraid of you, the devil, the city, or anybody else. We're not moved by our critics and whiners and snifflers. Wow. We're moved by this. And we're going to preach this right in the face of every human being. Amen. Can I have a better amen on that, please? You're kind of quiet today. Shout amen really good. So thank God you're in a place where, where they're not exalting themselves above the Word of God. And don't you do it either. In the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you now. You've got to keep your nose in this book. You've got to keep reading it and memorizing it and studying it. Are you listening? And just, just keep on keeping on. Uh, in the book... Yeah, because what else is God going to confirm? Yeah, but Brother Barclay, I saw a vision and I dreamt a dream. Good for you. Make sure it lines up with this book. Yeah, but I went to a meeting and I got me one of them there prophetic utterances, a prophecy. Well, let's make sure it lines up with this book. Everything you do, make sure it lines up with this book. Did you know that you're on assignment by God to come to his house, be taught the word of God. Amen. That means your pastor is the teacher, you're the student. Be taught the word of God, get it inside of you, meditate it through, pray it through, excuse the word, regurgitate it. Like a cow's cud in the manufacturing of milk. Regurgitate that and get it down into little bite-sized pieces so that when your pastor dismisses you from the house of God, you can run to your friends and people you work next to and your families, you know, and you can say, hey, guess what I learned in my church? Don't you understand? We're all preachers. We are all able ministers of the New Testament. The reason people, I believe this, the reason many people can't win souls, they're not healing the sick, maybe you're not flowing in the gifts. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what should be found in our mouth. This is what should be on our mind. This is what we should know that we know that we know that we know. And we're so confident that anybody around us, we have an answer for the sick. It's in here. We have an answer for the poor. It's in here. We have an answer for relatives. We, if, you, if you look at just the life of Christ, Jesus the Christ, he dealt with critics enemies that wanted him dead. He dealt with the government. He dealt with his mama, his brothers. He dealt with disciples. He dealt with cities. Uh, he dealt with the Roman governor, on and on and on, the court systems. And on and on we see Jesus Christ dealing with every aspect of life that you and I deal with. Now, I tell you right now, I I just think we ought to just clap and shout for the Word of God. Do it. Come on. Clap good and shout. Thank God for the Bible. Hallelujah. And then, go ahead and clap. I interrupted you. Praise God. Woo! And then, 
Give a good cheer and thank God for your pastor. Do it now. Thank you, Lord, for good shepherds who preach the uncompromised word of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so convinced that this is the life manual. This is the instructions. Now, you know, uh, if you're an outdoorsman or frontiersman, military, campers, hikers, you can get little books, and uh, they're, they're called survival guides. What do you do if you break a leg in the forest? What do you do if you wake up and there's a big old scorpion family in, sleeping with you? And you? What do you do if you get bit by a snake? What if, what if, what if? And that little survivor guide tells you little secrets and things to do, especially when you can't just run to the hospital or call 911. And how do you do it out in the field, in everyday field life? Amen. Troops are trained this way. How do you take care of first aid and take care of each other and things? Though you're not medical people, when you're out in, in the bush, out in the field, and you're in combat and stuff happens. Yeah. Now listen. Uh, this is our manual for combat, the word of the living God. That's why it says, the Bible says, don't you, don't you exalt yourself above this book. No, 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 no. This right here said, it, you wash your mind with the water of the word of God. You ought to come to every church service. And on every church service, just say, Pastor, go ahead and wash me. Give me a brain bath today. Give me the best brain bath you've ever given me. Because that's what this book does. The Bible calls it the washing of the water of the Word of God. Right here. Did you know the book of Romans says, now I'm not turning to all these verses because I've just come to exhort you and I take for granted your pastor surely has taught you these things. You've got great teaching priests in your house. Now, uh, it says here that we're to renew our minds with this word. Amen. Like Romans 12, one of my very favorites. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It goes on to say, you ought to bring into captivity every thought. Every thought to the thoughts of Jesus Christ. That's what this book says. Now, I can go on. You Bible people are nodding and saying amen. I can see you. But I can go on and on and on of the importance of the Word of God and the voice of God in our life. And one of the voices that God uses in our life is the is when we give voice to the logos. God called your pastor to teach you the Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. That's your position. That's your position in this kingdom. That's, your, that's what your pastor does. You come, you get washed, you listen, you learn. God just re-equips you. Not everything your pastor says is it so brand new that you've never heard it before? A lot of the things God wants us to do on a regular basis is reminisce. Go over it again. Amen. You know, wisdom is knowledge pounded in. You can get knowledge just by reading or get on your little electronic Bible there and your iPad or something. You can get all the knowledge you want, man. Knowledge is everywhere. But that doesn't mean you can use it in your everyday life that takes the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God, he just gives it freely. But you won't keep it. In fact, some people don't even recognize it when their pastor says something really wise and spiritually deep. In one ear, out the other. <laughs> because wisdom is knowledge pounded in again and again and again. You say, well, Brother Barclay, I'm glad you brought that up because sometimes my pastor tells the same stories. Uh, stop a minute. Do you want him to make up stories? The only stories we have are the ones we tell of other people and the only stories we have in our life are the ones that really happened. I've noticed this, that Americans especially, 
We get so bored so fast. We got to have something fast, new, fresh, different smell, different bun, different burger on the bun, different topping on the burger on the bun. It's amazing to me how bored and how swift we just get tired of something, use it up and spit it out and kick it to the side. Now we do that with Jesus Christ or his church or the word of God or your shepherd that God's hired and equipped to help you. Uh, you, you. I don't know if you'll make it or not, honestly. How would you make it? You're going to become spiritually malnourished. You're going to become spiritually weaker. And all these pollutants in the press, on the, on the Internet, I notice something. Now, there's some good things. I'm going to name some things, but I want to help them first. I'm not against social sites. And I think they can be reused really powerful. And I'm not against things like YouTube. Because you can go on YouTube and you can hear some really cool, powerful, even biblical stuff. But did you notice how much slander is on like uh, a company or, or, or a program like, uh, you know, uh, uh, YouTube or how much slander people put on Facebook, we'll say, because that's a real popular social site, or when they tweet. Listen, I don't, I, you can't blame all those companies. Those are some of the best tools. Listen, we got some of the best tools, my brother, sister, that we've ever had. You can text, email, man, upload, download, you know, stream. Oh, I can go on and on. You know it all, man. We got these greatest tools. Please, please use them to preach with. Use them to witness with. Use them to encourage people. Not slander and always got something nasty to say about somebody else. And I know this and I think that guy's crazy and I think that woman is and I think these people are. Let your pastor be the only one in your midst that is bringing up negative things about the times and the preachers, you know, in a teaching form, because we don't have the spirit of slander. But there are certain things that must be discussed. There are certain things that a shepherd has to talk to you about in order to warn you and to protect you. A good shepherd, he's a protector. He stands on the wall of God and he brings protection and he brings warning. That's a good shepherd. Amen. But you use these other tools. Well, you, I think uh, how much hope you could spread. Think about how you could advertise your pastor in your church. Hey, just before you get into church, text, say, I'm going to church. I'll be in the building in five minutes. Wait till you hear what my pastor's got to say today. You need to tune in on this or that or come to our church. You know how much good advertising you could do to help people? It's not a, it, wait a minute, hang on. It, it, your pastor didn't put me up to this. It, it's not a matter of, uh, uh, you know, us just advertising and collecting things and collecting people. It's a matter of you touching people and offering them what you've got. Don't you know what you've got? You got a good church, a good pastor, the word of God water baptized, born again, filled with the Spirit. You know, many people are, they have the gifts of the Spirit. We, uh, come on. And, and on and on and on. The beauties that we have in this day are so powerful. And the tools we have, top notch. So I lift a hand to you today. You lift one my way. Come on, do it right now. Do it right now. I lift a hand to you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the, may the boldness of God set upon you. May you have a fresh hunger mm, for this book, to study it, to memorize it, without being a big know-it-all. You know, oh, Lord, I just pray they will listen to their shepherd. They will listen to you, the good shepherd, the boss. They will read the book. They will be in church. They will help others. They will take what they learn, and they will go text it and, and post it and tweet it and email it and pass it on and talk about it and go have fellowships and invite neighbors in and tell them about the wonderful guide, the Holy Spirit. And the wonderful book that has instructions for every single thing in life. Lift a hand to me now if you're not. In the name of Jesus, say amen. Praise God. You know, the more I think about this Bible, church, myself being a preacher now for decades, all the money God has spent, 
to make you a good disciple and to make me a good disciple. Um, the more I think about how do people live today? What do they go by? Uh, are they still living by what they learned in the sixth grade, I wonder? Are they still, I don't know, are they just scanning and uh, get up on the internet and just kind of do some surfing around up there and see what other people are saying? Um, I'm shocked at how much yakking is going on. I jumped on the web to try to find a little information about something with my navigation system in my vehicle. I have a pretty complicated one or a pretty detailed one. It's probably not supposed to be complicated, but it's pretty detailed and the one little thing wasn't working. I jumped on, on the manufacturer's website and before I could even find a manual, there was this blog and that blog and then there, there was this. I mean, there was a list of them when I did like a Google search before I got to the site. There's just a list of them and, and almost none of it was helpful and almost all of it was filled with people's opinions of whether they liked it or didn't like it or whether they give it one star or five stars or don't touch it or do it. Hey, if I want a consumer's report, I'll go get a consumer's report. Don't you feel that way? But that's what I'm talking about. That's why your pastors let me talk to you like this and come into your church service and challenge you because of the Word of God and your shepherd and the other teaching staff that you have, that's to wash you, that's to build you up, it's to teach you, it's to give you the wisdom of God. We're not voicing our opinions. You got yours, I got mine. whoop de doo who cares? We're looking for the thoughts of God on every matter. This is the, this is the instruction manual for life. This tells you about marriage. If you're not married, it tells you about courtship. This tells you right here about purity and consecration. This tells you about power and where is it and how do you get it? And how do you get promoted in life? This tells you about God's blessing. You know, God's blessing keeps you alive, keeps you safe, keeps joy in your heart, protects you from the drunk driver and the terrorist. God's blessing sets you up for promotion. It sets you up for better pay. It sets you up for, to be a more severe spiritual being. It's all in this book. And your pastor has been assigned by Jesus Christ, the head of the church. He, God has disciplined your pastor. God has imparted to your pastor. God has taught your pastor. Other elder preachers have taught your pastor. Yeah. Yeah. And the equipment of God, God has equipped your pastor, enabled your pastor. Oh, yeah. And you know what it's for? You. That's right. It's for you to learn this book. Now, the beauty, I love this part, by the way, and I've exercised it all my life as a Christian, as long as I've been a Christian. It is your pastor's duty to get in the study library prayer closet and, and, uh, and study this book out, obeying God on what topic he wants taught, and then come out of that prayer closet, stand in the holy desk, and just teach you with boldness. You know the beauty of that for you? Well, there's a handful, but I'm thinking of this one. Do you know how many hours of study and research that I have saved my people? All they got to do this congregation here, same with you, with your pastor, all they got to do is attend church, bring a Bible with them, listen, and let me tell them the hours and hours. Some people say, man, we're going to be in church an hour and a half or something or longer? Oh, man, that's nothing. The hours your pastor put into making that 30, 40, 50-minute sermon, hours that he saved you, that she saved you hours of study and research and comparing by a professional student, a pastor, who has learned the hermeneutics and the homiletics and, the, and all the other things of how to dissect this book and, how to, and what's proper and what's right and what's legal spiritually, biblically, according to the rules of interpretation. 
Some of you, if you studied as long as your pastor, you can, now no offense, but you can still get a lot of things out of context because number one, God hadn't graced you to be the teacher. But number two, you may not have learned all the rules and you make mistakes trying to interpret this book. And pretty soon you can make this book almost say what you want it to. That is the beauty, my brother and sister. Every time you come to God's house, you ought to pat your pastor on the back. You can't all get to him, I know, but you know what I mean. Give him a salute, give him a cheer, sow a seed to him, because they are spending hours through the week dissecting and comparing and meditating and studying and, and pulling out and calling out to God and what part of this story do you want me to really drive home today? Well, well, how are you going to heal this people and deliver this people? It's all in the message that comes from the holy desk and then fire comes down in your chair there, in your heart, in the altars of God to confirm the word of God that was preached. Wow. That's powerful. And all you got to do is show up, bring something to read, bring the Bible, or if you're digital, and, uh, and take some notes and let this preacher that God has assigned to you, get, give him the time he needs. Quit looking for some little 15, 18, 20-minute deal, man. Give him some time. Relax. And let him bring to you what God has said to him in the prayer closet, what God has revealed to her reading this, studying this book. Because again, it, now there's multiple reasons, but for no other reason, they are really into this thing by the hand of God. And they can save you hours and maybe show you things that you would have never found in your own personal research. So I challenge you today in the name of Jesus to be a holy man or woman of God, a church man, a church woman, an altar man, an altar woman, and a Bible man, and a Bible woman, and a submitted man, and a submitted woman, and a committed man to truth. And same with a committed woman, if that's what you are. And the Bible says, in this day, the day you and I live in, there will be those who turn their ears away from the truth, I don't want a church. I don't want a pastor. I don't want to study. Hurry up and get me out of here, preacher. And they'll be turned on to fables. Hey, that is not you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again, pastor, for letting me talk to your wonderful staff and congregation. God bless you, everybody. Stick to the book, and you'll be all right.